So in this particular case, my view is, it's Bitcoin. Do I have a better option in the world? No. When, you know, would you do it if you knew it was going to work out badly? Yeah. I mean, right? right? I mean, like, would you do the right thing even if you knew you were going to suffer for it one day in the distant future? I, yeah. I think so. Right? What is my option? To do the wrong thing? So I'm, I'm not, I don't know what will happen. I'm not terribly concerned about it be, because as far as I can see, it's, it's the only obvious choice. If you're a technologist, make a list of all of the dominant technology networks that are going to change the world that are, that are exploding in front of our face today, this year. My list has one thing on it. Okay. If you're a technologist, it's the one thing and everything else is is not so compelling if you're you know if you're an idealist make a list of something which has a chance to make the world a better place over the course of the next decade you know and you know work your way down that list what's at the top of your list i i got one thing at the top of my list me too brother now there's some uncertainty there right i mean that they say that successful people are optimist and i believe it and if you, you know, if you look on crypto Twitter, it's like you put something out there and you get 8,000 likes or 4,000 likes, and then you get 12 people, you know, that will call you stupid because there's a sh shit coin that does something better. That's more quantum ray gun, you know, <laughs> immune or something. And you got to stop yourself because first of all, only 1% of the people on Twitter are posting that kind of stuff. And so if you're reacting to the people that are tagging you with that, you're reacting to the 1% that are most pessimistic, cynical, snarky, conflicted, whatever. And so that's one reason not to react to it. But the other reason, the other point is that all those people that are, have all that negative energy it's debilitating to them. They, you know, it's like, I won't get out of my, I won't cross the street. I might get hit by a car. I can't buy that because a quantum computer might break it. I can't do that because someone might do this. I can't do that because I can think of, I can think of one billionth of a situation in the distant future where it might hypothetically cause you to inf incur some legal liability that you might hypothetically suffer for. You know, it's like it's just so much negativity and, uh, you just shouldn't dwell on it. So when I when I forecast out, I'm like, you know, there's going to be volatility. Bad things going to happen. I don't know what they are. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Make your decision. I made my decision. Make yours. We yeah. need to move forward. I'm not going to sit and I'm not going to freeze to death. I'm not going to cower in my basement. I'm not going to I'm not going to engage in behavior which is which is obviously morally hazardous to my health. Right? I just rather have the uncertainty of the other thing. I'm a, I'm a hash function, right? Like, we talk about proof of work. The first guy spends five years to decide to, go to, to decide to put his life savings into Bitcoin. The next person spends three months. I spend one or two months, and then I drop 500 million into it, which is 20 years of corporate earnings. The next person looks at me and says, oh, I know Mike, I trust Mike, he dropped five, and they read like a press release, John. They read the press release, which is 20 years of earnings. The proof of work is I dropped the 500 million into the network, and then I said I did it and said why I did it. Do they need to read the book? Do they need to spend five years? They need to go down the rabbit hole? Do they need to, by the way, that person that's persuaded by, I'm a one-way hash function, right? I'm a hash function, right? They check my hash. You're like, okay, that guy did that. He must have had a good reason. What happens next? Well, 100 people read it. 90 don't pay attention. Eight disagree. Two agree. And two drop 500 million each. And there's the next billion. Then they tell two people they're the hash function, right? And so... My real contribution is I'm the $500 million hash function and I'm gonna explain that in an hour or two hours or four hours or maybe I'll explain it in, you know, by posting a gallery on hope.com. 
And by, by the way, if you listen to me for eight hours and you still don't get it, right, you're not going to get it, <laughs> right? Like, I invested six hundred million into this thing. Here's eight hours of me talking about it. Do you get it? Yes. No. Yes. Go crack your piggy bank. Take your money out. Put it in the Bitcoin network. Leave it there. Wait for the world to get better. Not everybody's going to agree with me, right? But I don't need everybody to agree with me. I just need anybody to agree with me, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's my view. I I could write. But it's like we're back to that issue, right? Just because you can't do a thing doesn't mean you should do a thing. I think there's a lot of great writers. I'm happy to support them. I'm happy to promote them. When I feel like there's something that needs to be written that hasn't been written by one of them, I think about it. But you know, right now, if you know, if I got an entree with the board of Twitter or the board of Square, and they gave me an hour. I'd go get on the Zoom and I would tell them why they ought to put five billion dollars into Bitcoin for the good of their company, for the good of the world, for, you know, to save their almighty soul. You know? <laughs> and then I would answer their questions. Like if you roll the clock back to 2007, Steve Jobs invents the iPhone, and you know people thought, oh, it's a toy. By 2009, the iPhone's got an app store, and if you understood anything about software. The iOS is a new is a new operating system, and it's going to be its own ecosystem, at least as important as the web. And it's going to it's going to spawn an entire new generation of applications, right? And the mobile wave is responsible for what, like five trillion dollars, five, ten, five to ten trillion dollars of wealth over the next decade. Can you imagine? Someone sitting around saying, "Oh, I get mobile device technology," and you're trying to time the market in Apple stock in 2011, like you're buying and selling Apple stock in 2011. I'm like, you're like, you want to shake them? Like, are you out of your mind? I'm I'm trading Facebook stock back and forth between eight dollars a share and four dollars a share and twelve dollars a share, and you you just want to do <laughs> this like. Like, do you not understand that one day every single person on the planet is going to have one of these things in their pocket, and it's going to go up by a factor of a hundred? And you're trying to like trade Apple stock between a dollar twenty-five and a dollar seventeen, and bragging about how you bought it at a dollar twenty-five and sold it at two dollars and eleven cents. And have you figured out the consequences of being short the share if it goes up by a hundred dollars? Like the amount, like, are you out of your mind? Like, because by the way, like, I I spent 30 years in the business and I obsess over this every single freaking minute of the day. And I wrote a book on it, right? I wrote the book. I predicted the future. You know, I made 500 million dollars investing in these things, right? And I started and and I put a small amount of capital in. And let me tell you one thing, John. I can't time the market. <laughs> 